Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show where in this video we're going to talk all about alpha ketoglutarate and its potential anti-aging properties and so this video it will mainly be talking about this recent exciting publication alpha ketoglutarate an endogenous metabolite extends lifespan and compresses morbidity in aging mice and in this paper they have evidence that seems to support both an extension in lifespan and even more significantly extension of health span in mice just by supplementing with alpha ketoglutarate so in this video, we'll begin with a discussion of what actually is alpha ketoglutarate, and then we'll look at the results of this recent publication to see the impact of taking alpha ketoglutarate, and then we'll kind of talk about how and why this might have happened, and then we'll talk about whether this could also be extended to help extend human health span. So aging affects all of us, and it's also a risk factor for multiple morbidities, including cancer and Alzheimer's disease. Given the current predicted changes in demographics, the healthcare sector is particularly vulnerable to be able to deal with all these increases in the number of people with different diseases. So there's a lot of hope and excitement at the moment of instead of developing treatments for these different diseases separately, that instead we can target aging and effectively reduce the risk of all of these different diseases, reducing the burden on the healthcare sector and potentially finding a more cost-effective strategy. So how does alpha ketoglutarate fit into this situation? Well, this is alpha ketoglutarate or AKG as I'll refer to from now on. So maybe it doesn't look that impressive or maybe it even looks a bit scary, but AKG is an essential metabolite within our cells. It is best known for its role within the Krebs cycle which is a cycle that is essential for the oxidation of fatty acids, amino acids and glucose to generate the reductive form of NAD+, NADH, which can then be used by the mitochondria to generate ATP, which is the energy source of a cell. But the list doesn't end there. AKG is involved in loads of processes. And so AKG can also be converted into glutamate and subsequently glutamine, and the latter are both amino acids, and so it can help stimulate protein synthesis and also help inhibit protein degradation in muscle. AKG can also act as a cofactor for different enzymes, one of which is prolyl 4-hydroxylase. This helps to generate 4-hydroxyproline, which is really important in the generation of collagen. And collagen, we know, is involved in the generation of tendons, ligaments, skin and muscle. Studies have also shown that AKG has many antioxidative functions as well. Part of this is mediated through AKG's role in detoxifying ammonia. Ammonia is toxic for a cell and AKG aids in the conversion of ammonia into urea, which can then be eliminated through urine. Another way that AKG is involved in antioxidative functions is through the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is another toxic molecule for the cell and it's thought that AKG is involved in the detoxification when it's converted into succinate. So what has this got to do with aging? Well studies have shown that AKG levels decline as we age. As you can see in this figure the levels of AKG are lower in the older mice than the younger mice. And so restoration of AKG through supplementation may have beneficial effects for anti-aging. For example, this Nature paper looked at the impact of supplementing AKG in worms and they found that AKG delayed aging and extended the lifespan of these worms by around 50%. Interestingly though, the worms did not see an extension of lifespan with AKG when they were already dietary restricted and so this suggests that the mechanism through which AKG is acting is through a similar pathway to that of which dietary restriction is acting. And the pathway that the authors of this paper suggest is the case is the mTOR pathway which is a pathway that promotes cellular growth. So in this recent publication they decided to test the impact of alpha ketoglutarate on mice and to examine the changes within lifespan and also health span. And so the work for this publication has come from the lab of Dr. Brian Kennedy when he was at the Buck Institute for Research on Aging and his lab was searching for compounds that were generally recognised as safe but had the potential to influence ageing in mammals. So given the previous work on AKG and also the fact it is generally recognised as safe, this provided some motivation to examine the impact of AKG supplementation on mice. 
So what did they actually do in this study? So we can see here the experimental setup for the study. And so this was done in both male and female mice. And AKG supplementation at 2% weight by weight began at 18 months of age. And so in human years, that would be roughly between the ages of 50 and 60 years old. And for both male and female mice, there were two different cohorts. So there was a lot of mice in the study. And in addition to just looking at when natural death occurred, during this time period, they also took measurements to examine the health span of the different mice. And the way they did this was by using a clinically relevant frailty index that takes into account 31 different measurements. So what did they see? Well, if we begin by looking at the lifespan of the male and female mice, we can see that within the female mice, there was a significant increase in both median lifespan and survival by 16.6% and 19.7% in the first cohort and 10.5% and 8% in the second cohort. And they also did see an improved survival for the male mice as well, but it wasn't significant in both cohorts. But the main results that the authors of this paper promote most in this publication is the fact that the reduction in frailty was actually more dramatic than the increases in lifespan that they saw. And so they suggest that this AKG is actually being able to compress morbidity in the mice. So how did they actually examine health span? So as I mentioned, they did this by a frailty score, whereby the higher the number of this score, the mouse is more at risk to adverse health outcomes. So this frailty index takes into account a variety of different measurements and they include measurements such as visual factors such as losses of fur colour as well as physical factors such as the tail stiffening and any gait disorders. Also looking at their breathing rates and any hearing loss, any visual loss as well as any signs of discomfort. So examining health span is notoriously quite challenging to do and we'll come back to this a little bit later on but let's firstly look at the results that they did see in the study. So what they saw was AKG treatment decreased the severity of multiple aging phenotypes in the females and this included pyloerection, their pain assessment and loss of fur colour and their grip strength loss, just a couple of examples. And in the males they saw that grip strength loss, gait disorder, their hearing loss and poor cope condition were all decreased when they were supplemented with AKG. And I think one of the most striking results is this um, difference in the loss of the coat condition. So if we look at these images here, we can see AKG treated mice on the left and control mice on the right. And there's some quite you know striking visual differences in the coat color and the thickness of the coat. And if we just focus on the female mice, in the first cohort, they actually saw a potential reversal in age-dependent hair greying just by AKG treatment. However, it's important to point out that not all phenotypes were improved by AKG treatment. For example, the treated mice failed to perform better in a treadmill exhaustion test and showed no cardiac functional improvement. But these weren't considered significant adverse changes and maybe they don't outweigh the benefits that we do see with AKG treatment. But as a biochemist, what, what kind of explains or underpins why AKG could be having this impact? Well, to get a better mechanistic insight to the beneficial effects of AKG, the authors decided to look at some inflammatory markers in the plasma of some of the female mice. And so if we look at this figure here, we can see that there seems to be a general suppression of secretion of these different inflammatory markers. And this was consistent with previous findings in young pigs that received AKG that also saw a reduction in inflammation. And so interestingly, inflammatory factors are secreted by senescent cells. And senescent cells are cells that have undergone a process of cell cycle arrest and develop this secretory phenotype that include these inflammatory factors. And based on some in vitro studies, the authors found that whilst AKG didn't prevent the development of senescence, it did reduce the inflammatory secretion. So it would be interesting to see further studies that further explore how AKG could be mediating this effect. So as I said earlier, understanding health span or at least measuring health span is notoriously quite challenging to do. And um, whilst this study does a good effort in terms of describing the frailty index, I think it fails to miss, for example, some cognitive assessments during aging, which would be really interesting to, to see and how AKG could impact that. 
And another way to measure health span could be by determining biological age. And so effectively, biological age differs from chronological age, which is the time passed since birth, and instead focuses on a time dependent component of an organism's overall health. And one way you can measure biological age is based on epigenetic marks, referred to as an epigenetic clock. And interestingly, epigenetics also is related to AKG. So epigenetics refers to modifications on top of the DNA sequence. And some of these marks include methylation of DNA, in particular of cytosine residues. And alpha-ketoglutarate plays a key role in demethylation of some of these sites. As it acts as a cofactor for a family of enzymes referred to as TET proteins that actually catalyze this demethylation. So it would be interesting to see if any of these mice actually had changes in their epigenetic marks. However, it wasn't assessed in this study. Interestingly, though, the company sponsoring the research has published some data from customers taking its AKG supplements, showing a reversal in biological age as measured by DNA methylation. So this is actual human data. Obviously, this wasn't a randomized controlled clinical trial. But in a recent press release, the company have announced that they're currently conducting a randomized double-blinded placebo controlled clinical trial. So I think we'll just have to kind of wait and see uh, if AKG does have an impact in humans and effective as an anti-aging compound. Moreover, I think it'll be interesting to see more research into the mechanism by which AKG is potentially having this anti-aging effect. In particular, what I haven't mentioned so far are studies that have shown AKG to be able to influence potentially the gut microbiome composition. So there's plenty of stuff still to investigate and understand about what initially seemed to be such a simple molecule. And also another exciting thing would be to try and understand whether or not AKG could be used in combination with other anti-aging compounds such as senolytics and NAD precursors. So hopefully this has given you a good understanding of this recent publication and hopefully you've learned something and as always thanks for listening.